All right, you might have seen a little delay right there. Um, sorry about that. I got a phone call in. Okay, um, basically we finished setting it up. Western Russia got some infantry, and then we put a tank in North Africa. Okay, now we're on the ships. We're going to give a battleship and a sub to C-Zone 5. I know that was a little blurry. You couldn't see that. So basically you would just go find the C-Zone, and this is number 5 right here. So you basically put them there. Okay, and then another sub for C-Zone 9, which would be right there. And then I need a destroyer. Another sub. And another transport. C-Zone 16. Basically this is representing the Italian fleet. <laughs> You know, if you play bigger editions like Global or something or, um, you know, 1940 Pacific or 1940 Europe, um, you'll have a lot more pieces. And um, it's a lot better of a game. This is really a watered-down version. And um, But, you know, like I said, if you're just learning, this is the perfect edition. So, all right, so now we got those set up. We're going to put these extra little pieces in the bag here. We'll try to do this one-handed. And I can already tell I'm not going to be able to, so hold up. All right, and um, basically, if you ever played Risk, which a lot of people have, this is just, this is Risk, but it's actually historical. You know, this, this stuff really happened. This is World War II. If you're into World War II, this is a cool game to play around with your buddies. And um, there's a, it's a lot deeper. It's going to take you some practice. you got to play it a few times to really get some good strategy going on. Kind of know what you're doing. But um, it's a great game. Okay, so basically what we got here is um, the British, they owned the United Kingdom. They had a nice little fleet out here in the Atlantic. They owned most of... Uh, Africa, um, basically Germany was in northern part of it, you know, uh, General, um, what's his, oh my god, I can't, Rommel, forgot his name for a second, and then they had uh, control of um, India and Australia and stuff like this. Then, you know, the United States is basically not even involved in the war until later, until Japan got them involved. So basically, they're just in, you know, starting off in the United States. And then uh, Russia is in Russia, obviously. They're, on, they're in this side of the world. And then um, Japan's out here in the Pacific when they started. Uh, it starts off with them already kind of like invading China and taking over some of the coastal areas. And then um, we have Germany who already has most, you know, control of most of uh, Europe. So that's where you start off. It's basically the year 1941 is the name of the game, and that's where they start. You'll have other games like 1942, and you'll kind of start off with uh, the Axis owning a lot more countries and stuff. And then, uh, like I was saying earlier, the 1940 editions, it really starts off at the beginning from scratch. Everybody's kind of uh, has peace treaties and stuff, and you got to wait to a certain turn to um, start attacking. There's a lot more details into it. Okay, uh, one more thing about the map, I forgot, you're going to, sorry about that glare there, you're going to notice that um, on some of the countries, they have these little factory symbols, basically when you buy units, that's where you're able to put them, um, now, for the British, they got one in Australia, one here in India, and one in the United Kingdom. Uh, Germany is just going to have one in their country, Germany. Russia, same thing. And same thing with America. They can only build in Washington, D.C. Japan is the same way. They can only, you know, build in Japan. But Russia does have a second one here in uh, Kokakis, down here in where all uh, their oil fields were in real life. Okay. So basically now we know the units, I've shown you how to set it up, so now you're at this point of like, okay, what the hell do we do now? A lot of people get to this point and they don't understand, and you know, I agree, there's a lot that goes into it. So basically we'll go through the rule book a little here, 
as far as the turn, how the turns go. So let me open this up. And you know, with this edition as well, you don't get paper money. Um, other editions do come with it. You can order some paper money. You just got to go on the websites of Axis and Allies and look around and you can get some paper money for your edition. But with this edition, it does not come with it, so you got to kind of like keep track of it with a piece of paper and a pen. How much you're spending. Because you don't have to spend all your money every turn. You can save up money. Okay, and that's another thing. Like, um, So let's say Japan took over India and how they have these little country symbols. Every country comes with these little um, national markers. And basically you would just put a national marker over it and it would let everybody know in the game that Japan now owns this country. And that's the way with every country. They all have their little markers. So as you take over more countries, you mark it that you own it. And that's how you'll um, keep track of the income you're supposed to get at the end of your turn. Okay. Um, attack. Let's go through the attack value before we go through the uh, the turns. Okay, um, attack value, let's just start off with infantry. We'll take an infantry man here. Okay, an infantry man, everybody's infantry men are the exact same as far as attack value, defense value. So basically, they're worth one in attack value. So let's say I attack with this infantry man against a British infantry man here. When I'm attacking him, his attack value is a one or less, which six, you use a six-sided dice. Basically, I have to roll a one to get a hit, which is, you know, really hard to do. Uh, you got one in six chance. So that's the attack value of them. Uh, defensively, they are a two or a less. So I can roll a one or a two to get a hit. So basically, they're better at defense, infantry, okay? And uh, their move value, they can only move one country. They can't go into the sea zones, obviously, but uh, on land, they get to move one country over. And when you are buying them, they cost three, $3. So they're, they're the most cheapest units you can buy. And... Um, Basically, you, you know, you, you do need infantry as kind of a buffer. Like, if you get in a big tank battle with another country, it's good to have infantry with you to uh, suck, soak up some of the hits. Basically, let them get killed off and not your uh, tanks, okay? All right, so now we'll talk about the tanks. Let's just grab this British tank here. Okay, all the tanks are exactly, all these units are exactly the same for every country. The, you know, no... No country has um, a stronger tank or anything, even though we all know the Panzer tanks and stuff like that for Germany was a lot stronger than the Shermans. But in this game, it's not represented. Basically, every, every unit attacks and defends at the exact same values. 